Hey, everybody. I'm Jackie Gales Webb. Welcome to HUR at Home Inspiration on a Labor Day weekend. Doesn't it feel good on a Sunday when you know that tomorrow you don't have to go to work if you're blessed to have Labor Day off? Labor Day is a federal holiday in the United States celebrated on the first Monday in September to honor and recognize the American labor, excuse me, the American labor movement and the works and contributions of people like you, people who work hard and to make this country the great country that it is, to feed your families, to have a wonderful livelihood and to serve your God. For many, this is the last holiday in the summer. Yes, indeed, you know, I mean, we're talking about barbecues, swimming, the beach, outdoor sports, picnics, cracking Maryland crabs, blue crab. I didn't have any Maryland blue crabs this summer. The summer just went just like that. COVID-19 limited a lot of activities that we used to gather together and enjoy each other. But, you know, God is still good. We manage, we cope, we look around at God's blessings that exist, and we thank God for them. And I am truly thankful and blessed today because I have with me two very talented gentlemen, two gentlemen whose ministries have touched lives all over the world, Tim Bowman and Patrick Lundy. Hey, Tim. Hey, Auntie. Hey, Patrick. Hey, Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell our audience, in case they don't know, that Tim is a Grammy-nominated singer, songwriter, producer, and worship pastor for Spirit of Faith Christian Center in the Washington, D.C. area. And Patrick Lundy is the founder and leader of one of the finest groups in the world, the Ministers of Music. And he has had several albums out and just does a wonderful job here in the DMV and all over the world. So welcome, both of you. Thank you. Glad to be here Thank with you. Thank you so much for having us. Now, Tim, <laughs> you have some really, really uh, impressive relatives. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about your father, who is a jazz artist. We're talking about your auntie. Vicky Winans, Marvin Winans produced you. My goodness gracious, uh, what an upbringing you have had. But you know what I found really interesting was that when you went to school, you you studied pharmaceutical sciences? I did. All that music in the house and you went to school for farm. Explain that, please. <laughs> it, um, yes. First of all, again, thank you so much for having me. My childhood was very... Um, unorthodox. A lot of times when people hear my story, they're like, what in the world? Like, when were you playing on Jungle Gyms? But uh, they called me industry kid. I, I really didn't have, um, you know, really that opportunity to do that because I knew what I was supposed to be doing at a very early age and my family knew. So they kind of molded me. All right. So where does this family, um, where's this pharmacy uh, piece come in? Well, my mother is like huge on education. She's huge on the degrees and all this stuff. And I don't care who your family is. The music industry is extremely fickle and it's extremely, um, you know, I see Patrick shaking his head like, yes, yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. It's um, it's extremely fickle. I have many cousins who have the same upbringing and have uh, the same talent and some greater talent and um, never really cut through. Um, so you never really know. So um, I had a plan B and that was to be a pharmacist. And I was going to be a pharmacist and I never forget what happened. I made a incredible faith move. I met with, at that time, my girlfriend's uh, father, who's now my wife, who's now my father-in-law. At that time, we were dating. I came and sat with him in his office, and we're just great friends. But at that time, we were dating. So, and he said, So, what are you doing? I said, I'm in pharmacy school and, you know, I'm working on my new project, blah, 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 blah. He said, 
well, do you know what God called you to do? I said, yes, God called me to be a minister and God called me to be a um, gospel artist and these things. And he said, well, what are you in pharmacy for? I said, it's my plan B. He said, well, what's a plan B if you know what God called you to do? And I sat there and it changed my life. And y'all, I made the craziest, which is at that time seemed like Miss uh, Jackie, the craziest, craziest decision I'd ever made. I was two years from graduation to become a, a farm D, which is a pharmacist full out. I can work in a hospital, do all this stuff. I dropped out of pharmacy school and I thought my parents were going to kill me. They didn't kill me. <laughs> that year, I had a number one album on Billboard and a number one single on Billboard. And the rest, um, as far as naturally providing, I do four, five, six times what I would have ever did as a pharmacist. And God has honored my um, my commitment to him. And that's how I got into pharmacy. Amen. Man, you, you, you mentioned your lovely wife. First of all, congratulations on baby number two. Thank you. <laughs> What is baby number two's name and what's baby number one's name? My sweetheart, Sophie, is baby number one. And my main man, Cresswell, is baby number two. Now, when you all got married, how many how many years ago was that? Five years. Actually, October 10th will be our fifth anniversary. Mm -hmm. you, you, you all made the news, didn't you? What did we? We got back from <laughs> we got back from our honeymoon, Miss Jackie. And everything was like crazy because before we left, we had posted about our commitment to each other to remain virgins. When we landed, we had basically within that first two weeks, just the first two weeks, we were on good. We actually went on Good Morning America. We went on The View. We went on Oprah show um, on the own network. She was doing a new show. We went. I mean, it, it just was crazy. And um it, it's, it's something that definitely contributed to me being here. Um, at first, people were like, why are they being virgins? They are losers and this. And then God ended up switching that narrative and began to have people. I remember Whoopi Goldberg said on when we were on The View, she said, why do we praise these um, reality stars um, and these sex tape stars for making sex sex tapes, but we demonize people for taking a stand on the opposite end. Why is that bad? And then making a sex tape is good. So God ended up switching that narrative and that was history as well. You know, I didn't realize that you all were being demonized for yes. amazing. And a lot of it, Miss Jackie, surprisingly was from Christians. <laughs> wow. Yep. And then when the world started to now get on our side, that's when the Christians follow suit, as opposed to the Christians standing up, being the brothers and sisters that we know that we are. Um, so it was an interesting experience. But one thing that um, is always fulfilling is when you trust God and obey God. And we did what God told us. to do. Wow. Now, Patrick, how, how many years have you all been married? You and your, your lovely wife? Uh, 22 years, March. <laughs> 22? Yeah. Okay. Is what is the secret to a happy, blessed marriage? Jackie, I'm looking you know, at you. Just, just, keep, just keep the wife happy. Whatever she wants, she gets it. You know. Uh, I think for me, though, uh, literally, I just respect uh, my queen. And I, whatever, you know, her desires are, I'm really trying to fulfill them. I try to support her in whatever she's doing. And um, you've heard the phrase, don't sweat the small stuff. If it's, if it's not gonna really, really make a difference or bother you, go with it, it's okay, it'll be all right. Now, now I must let everybody know that Patrick is in his car because <laughs> his house and nine other houses in his neighborhood lost power at the last minute. And so he jumped in his car and drove around to another place where they wasn't allowed truck in front in exactly. front of the car so he could do the interview. And and um Tim and Patrick and I just learned that we're in the same neighborhood. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if this, was COVID, this wasn't COVID-19 time, you could you all could have just come over. I yeah, know, exactly. <laughs> you right. could have cooked for us. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Actually, there are ribs cooking. <laughs> oh, you can set those outside when we finish here. Yeah. <laughs> now, Tim, you know, I told you earlier that my favorite songs are Fix Me and I'm Good. Yes, and I, 
I, I, I played the song I'm Good Today and I read up about it and saw that it was originally written for Mary J. Blige. How did it get in your hands? Well, I was doing a new project and I'm signed to uh, super producer Rodney Jerkins. Mm -hmm. And um, um, we were in the studio and he said, I did this song for Mary and it was supposed to be on her new project, but I think I can, I can, I can take it. I think it, 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 it's you. So heard it. And the opening line of my song is, people say, Tim, yo, you're my hero. It was people say, Mary, you're my hero. So I said, no. Nah. And we, we, we took the song and we tailor made it to fit me, switch some things, put some things here, put some things there. And it gave me my very first number one single. Um, and a, a, a crazy story about trusting God, a lot of the radio industry and, and, and miss, um, Jackie, you know how PDs can be sometimes. They told me that it wouldn't work. It was too um, this for gospel and you needed something like this and blah, 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 blah. And I knew what God had told me. And again, um, you, you'll find that a lot of times in my story, it's about me really putting trust in God when everything around me seems like it shouldn't be because, you know, who wouldn't as new artists and Patrick, you, you know, um, a lot of new artists feel pressure from the radio industry to conform mm -hmm. and to switch their message as opposed to being authentic, authentically them. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's the story behind that song. Wow. I love it. I've always loved that song. I mean, it's, it's just so positive, you know, I'm good, you know, <laughs> I, <laughs> And it, that is so sad that there are people out there that would make you want to change in order to conform. Because you got, you got to know, Miss Jackie, they heard me from, I say, Scott, Bobby, do that, how made it over. Scott. So I was coming off of that. And if it didn't look like that or what me and my aunt had did for years, no, 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 no. Don't rebrand yourself. This is what we want from you. And, you know, it was a lot of pressure because this was really my my big coming out. And it was like, if we're going to do this, it needs to do this and it needs to do that. And, you know, a lot of people told me to consider it, consider doing more scatting and consider doing that because that's what people know you for. And I took a, I took a risk and, um, um, I'm glad I did. Yes. It's beautiful. Thank Patrick, you. Do you feel pressured by radio or the record companies to do a certain thing or have your music a certain way? You know, um, when we, for our very first CD, um, unfortunately, we, we got criticized from radio announcers that the project was too perfect. Wow. Um, <laughs> too perfect. Um, too what? accurate. Uh, it was too clean. And I, you know, I didn't really know how to respond to that. I mean, we, we just kind of put a project together according to how the Lord gives it to you. And the producers and the mixing engineers, they mix it the way they, but yeah, we were told that, that it was just too perfect sounding for gospel choirs. And that was about 24 years ago. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah, it I, is amazing. I, I, but the good thing is uh, it got a lot of um, attention in Chicago. And that's really how we got into the gospel industry because the Chicago ate it up. So, you know, God always has someone who's being blessed. Only takes one. And it only takes one. Exactly. Now, Tim, the, the other song that I told you was my favorite was totally different from I'm, I'm Good, It's More Traditional, and it's called Fix Me. Yes. Uh, so I'm a big Clark Sisters fan. I'm from Detroit, Michigan, mm -hmm. and um, it's an old Twinkie Clark song. It's an old hymn, and Qu Twinkie redid it, I believe, in the 80s. Um, and, you know... It just always stuck with me. So I said, one day I want to do something with it. Well, this was that one day. Um, I flew to Houston to work with a prolific producer by the name of Aaron Lindsay. Mm -hmm. And we got in the studio and me and Aaron was working on it. Um, somebody knocks on the door. They go open the door. It's Israel Houghton. Mm. What? Yes. Israel Houghton walks in and said, man, I heard you were in town. I never met you. I just had to come by the session. So I said, wow. I said, okay, you're here. And me, him, and Aaron sat in that studio and wrote and wrote and arranged and boo, boo, 
Buka. And we just built it and built it and built it. And that's how we got Fix Me from myself, legendary Aaron Lindsay, and Air legendary Israel Houghton in Houston, Texas. Goodness gracious. Yeah. Now for Faith City, your group at your church that you're going to do a project with, are you going to do all the writing? Well, actually, the album is done. Oh, Okay. It, um, we did it New Year's Eve and then a pandemic hit it. We did a live recording New Year's Eve and um, we've been doing some things at the ministry live on Sunday morning since then. Um, and a lot of record labels started calling and they're like, we want the project, we want the project. So I I'm actually going to make a major announcement in the coming weeks of oh. who Faith City is going with. But it's um, it's it's a major label um, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Um, well, you better make sure you let me know. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> and Patrick, you recorded your uh, album in November, wasn't it? We did. It was our 25th anniversary. Wow. And we did it at my church, Reed Temple AME. Pastor Mark Whitlock is our new pastor there now. And um, it was a tremendous time because we were able to invite everybody who's ever sang in the ministers to come together. So we had this. 300 plus choir of alumni, current ministers of music, and then my Georgia connection as well. They came up from Georgia. And so it was a tremendous time. And we're just getting around to um, working on the project. The single is ready, but the rest of the project is being worked on as we speak. Wow. Well, for, for both of you, I'll throw this question out. It's about live recording because you know, I, I'm an old timer. I remember the days when James Cleveland was alive and he would just pull a truck up next to the church. <laughs> and record right. it right and the album, I mean, the yeah, the record would be out in the next month. Yeah. Oh, wow. But there's a lot more that goes on nowadays. Can you talk about recording a live album? What has to happen? I'll start out with Tim and go to Patrick. OK, it's it's definitely a lot of uh, a lot of work. Um, a lot of times for me, I like to go picking the songs, then working on a production and then working on actually recording it. Where if you don't have a facility that is able to record it at the level that it needs to be recorded, then you still need to bring in a, a, what they call a rig. Um, some people do trucks. Some people do, you know, bringing in suitcases worth of um, uh, equipment mm -hmm. out or, or outboard gear and setting it up and then wiring the stage. But the key is why all that stuff is needed is you need to capture it at its peak quality. And when you cut corners, that's when you get live recordings. And I'm sure Patrick, he's a legend. He can tell you, you get recordings that don't sound as up to it. Our live recording, we actually pulled off in a month. Um, it was, it was a, a crazy time, but we started, I think like Jan um, December 1st and we recorded December 31st. Um, with the recording. Then after you record, you have to go with mixing, mastering, overdubs, all that stuff. So it's a very arduous process. Um, but I would say the average live recording normally is about two to three months um, of, of prep time before the actual mm -hmm. night. Would you say? Yeah, I totally agree. And I think um, it's important to say here because there may be someone listening who's considering doing a project that um, a lot of people don't realize the probably the most important uh, aspect of the recording is really getting that band tight. Do you mm -hmm. agree with me with that, Tim? Absolutely. A lot of people put a lot of, we put emphasis on the vocals and that kind of thing, but the truth of the matter is that's probably, Jackie, one of the things that's different now. Maybe back in the day, however it came out vocally was going to be the way you heard it. Now we have the opportunity to go back in the studio and we can work on our background vocals. The soloists can redo certain lines and we can really get the, the project straight. But the band has to be tight and the drummer really has to be in the pocket or you're going to be starting over from scratch. Yeah. And, and the audience has to work too. being the audience oh, and yeah. the recording is exhausting. It <laughs> is. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. Everybody's involved. That's Did why it's all live. Um, in your live recordings, um, the the night or the day of the live recording, this song was, you know, the audience, the congregation was on fire, the singers. Uh, but when you got in the studio and listened to it, it wasn't the hit that you thought it would be. 
or the number one song? Did that ever happen? Or, or well, I, I'm, only, I'm only one live record in. That's probably better answered by uh, Mr. Patrick. Yeah, that, that's happened before. But I mean, we choose like our singles for various reasons. You know, I chose Waymaker not only because the night of it was an electric song, but I just thought it was um, appropriate for this time that we're in right now for people to echo and realize that God is making a way for all of us through this pandemic. So yeah, there, there are different reasons why we choose the songs, but yeah, Jackie, I, I would definitely agree. There have been times when we thought the song was a 10 live, but then you got in the studio and you're like, mm, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, you, you mentioned the times we're going through now with COVID-19, but we're also going through times of, you know, race, racial injustice and yes. the awakening of that and, you know, growing up African-American in this country. Is any of that getting into your performances or your music? You mentioned how in Waymaker, you wanted to make sure that people knew that God was a way maker and can get us out of this situation. Any other songs that, or inspiration through this very difficult period, anything that has inspired you to, to write or to do a certain piece? Yes, I'm actually writing a song that I'm going to include in the project called Cover Me. And that song is, is basically a prayer because I mean, I think all of us have found I hope anyway that our prayer life is even stronger than ever, asking the Lord to protect us and guide us as we go and do what we have to do in this environment. So I'm excited about that particular song. I'm thinking that'll probably be the next single after we get this one going. But it's 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 a prayer that just simply says, God, cover me, take care of me, take care of my family um, through this through this pandemic. Beautiful. Tim, I'm always so proud of Patrick Lundy and the Ministers of Music when I see them on PBS, the national concerts on the mall, the Memorial Day concerts that they do. They do such a wonderful job. And you're such a handsome young man. Are you doing television? What's going on? Are videos? What's, what's up with you? Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm, how are you dark skinned and blushing? <laughs> <laughs> Um, actually, um, right now we're just visually, we're just doing a lot of things at the ministry, um, every week. Um, I was on, uh, the word network for about three years, um, had a TV show with my beautiful wife. Um, and we decided to transition, um, and we, we're, we're thinking about bringing it back, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. Please do. We will. <laughs> Thank you. Patrick, uh, the Ministers of Music is such a powerful group. Talk about the birth of the Ministers of Music, how it all came about, and how you got all those great people together. Well, you know, I grew up um, in Thomasville, Georgia. It's about four hours south of Atlanta. A lot of people are like, where in, where in the world is Thomasville, Georgia? And I always say it's really close to Tallahassee, Florida. So it's like 35 minutes from Tallahassee. It's at the very bottom. But I grew up in a church where I heard all different uh, genres of sacred music. My pastor was a Morehouse graduate. He sang in the Morehouse Glee Club. My minister of music was a piano major. The church organist had an opportunity to go to Metropolitan Opera. Mm. Um, yeah, so I, I just kind of grew up in that environment. Um, my I was in a group called the Thomasville Music and Drama Troupe. And Fred Allen, he did a lot of work in New York on Broadway. So I, I, I just grew up around a lot of great influences. And then I was a part of the Georgia Mass Choir as a teenager. I grew up in Georgia Mass with uh, Reverend James Bignon and Reverend Milton Bigham. So they had great influences on me. When I came to Howard, um, I, I was fascinated by Aphelius Paul Gatlin, who was the director of the Howard Gospel Choir. And I was thinking, how are they able to get, how was he able to get this sound out of this choir? In fact, they were doing some George Masquar songs. I'm like, whoa, they sound much better than what, you know, <laughs> we sounded like growing up. So long story short, I decided I would get in the choir to really soak up what he was teaching. And um, I've always enjoyed being uh, around singers, great singers, but I've always enjoyed and known the difference between someone who's just talented and someone who's anointed to mm. do what they do. 
And so I really wanted to start a group of singers from this, from the DC area. I had done a lot of weddings. I had played for uh, a lot of funerals. I just met people here and there. And so that's how the Ministers of Music got started. I was looking for that combination of gifted and talented singers and musicians, but yet uh, persons who understood that ministry requires anointing. Can you, so, can you describe the difference between just being talented and being anointed? Well, some would even say it might just be a personal preference, but I think those of us that walk with the Lord know the difference. I think you know when someone is really gifted, and I'm not taking anything away from that because God gave them the gift, but it takes um, it takes another level. It takes a prayer life and a relationship in Christ, a consistent one, for your art or for your music to go to that next place where you are really, really having an impact and breaking yokes, as we call it in church. I mean, I, I think that's the difference. Amen. Amen. If I can add to that, I think some people just have it. You, there yeah. are certain, there are certain, there are certain artists without naming that, you know, are always in public scandal. <laughs> Jesus. You know they're not living worth nothing. Every time you look up, it's another thing. <laughs> it's that, da, da, da. But when they open their mouths, the room shifts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we can find precedents for that scripturally. Yeah. That, you, you know, come without some, repentance. Yeah, some people say they casted out demons in my name, that they healed, they did all these things in my name, mm -hmm. but I didn't know them depart from me, but they still did works and they mm -hmm. still had an anointing to do those works. Mm -hmm. So I, I would say, yes, if I, if I was at, at adding to that, yeah, I believe having relationship, I do believe getting in God's word, I think is one, but I have examples of people who don't do any of those things, but when they open their mouths, there's a shift that happens. True. The shift and the change that happens. And if we get to naming names, we all know some of the people that I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so I believe that you can have both working in tandem with each other. Um, if, if that's just my opinion. God can use whoever God wants to use. That's right. When he wants to do it. And mm -hmm. this is a process. This whole journey, this whole journey with him is a process. None of us are sanctified immediately after we become saved. So we have to remember that. So yeah. thank you, Tim. I agree with you with that, actually. Yeah, yeah. So, Tim, what is a Winans family reunion like? Ah! <laughs> oh, man. Um, <laughs> that must be a huge gathering when it happens. A lot of uh, clowning and a lot mm. of playing and a lot of singing. Um, we used to have, um, like, growing up, up until I was, like, 25, we used, at our Christmas parties, we used to have singing competitions. And it was best single. That was one award, best group. And I think it was like best kids or something like that. And um, my um, my aunts and uncles used to be um, on the um, uh, the judging body and they used to give away like I think the, if you won the best single competition, I think you got five thousand uh, dollars. The best group was the other five and the group had to split. I think it was like four or five people. They split five and then a kid got like twenty five hundred. So we used to play and sing for some major money. Yeah, every, that's serious. Every Thanksgiving. <laughs> so it was like, like we used to, it wouldn't be like, okay, what song are we going to come up with? They used to, you used to pick your team, used to pick your group. And then you would have like 30 minutes to prepare. It has to be original music. So you had to mm -hmm. write, produce everything and perform it in front of the group. I um, mean, you had 30 minutes of performing in front, in front of the judges. 30 minutes, everyone would go, they would tabulate and then say, the winner is blah, and write you a check for $5,000. Whoa, what a family reunion. I'd be rehearsing. <laughs> <laughs> <All year long. laughs> right. Wow. Well, Tim, I, I'm, I'm supposed to have CC Winans on later this month. She has a new song out, Never Lost, which is beautiful. I played it today. Yeah. Can I ask her if, if she and BB will ever get together and sing together again. Can I ask you, her? You have to. Everybody's waiting on it. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's waiting on it. They're you know? so talented. I mean, it, um, 
I, I had the opportunity to interview um, Deborah Joy Winans. Okay, yes, my cousin. Here, your cousin. She was playing Cece in the musical about BB here at Arena Stage. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> what a family. And she yeah. just wrapped Greenleaf. Oh, did you like yeah. that? I did. I'm a little behind. Don't tell her I said that. But I'm a little behind. <laughs> I won't mention it. I won't mention the end, but I think you'll be happy with the well, end. We, you know what? We, me and Joy played the first time and actually only time we got to act together. You know, the Whitney um, Lifetime movie? Yeah. If you look closely, go back and watch. That's me and Joy playing BB and CC. Get out of here. Yep. I'm going to go back and look. <laughs> <laughs> and I got to work with Angela Bassett. She was directing it. So I got, mm. she, she was just like, auntie, she would tell me, okay, so I want you to do this. I want you to do this. And, you know, it was just, I'm like, this is Angela Bassett holding me, calling me nephew right now. <laughs> it's an experience though I'll never forget. But me and Joy, I was BB, she was CC. So we had to wear the old 80s big shoulder pad suit and all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to find this movie this weekend. Yes. <laughs> Oh my goodness, what a life you've had, Tim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're so young. Wow, thank you. I was um I was talking to I was talking to my praise team and they called me like a 90-year-old person because I really am. I act extremely old. Um and I was sharing with them um some of the things because I'm 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 not a guy who really goes through a lot of the things that I've been through and experienced good and bad I just kind of keep moving so I had an opportunity to sit and and really share with them and God began to show me and 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 and, and sh tell me yeah you didn't get a chance to do a lot of things and I spoke on it earlier that you may have wanted to do as a child but I was preparing you for the season that you're in now. Mm -hmm. And I, I, like, so, like crazy things. Like I'll never forget, I was 19 and I used to travel and lead worship for Benny Hinn. Really? Yes. Like, yes. So it for me, it was like, oh, nobody wants to say, uh, I will bless the Lord. I wanted to be out, you know, <laughs> da, 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 but. I was in black suits and a black tie and a white shirt leading worship for Benny Hinn. And now all of those life experience, mm -hmm. life experiences have played. And Benny used to send a book out this thick with hymns and say, learn the entire book, a hymn on each page, probably like a hundred hymns, learn wow. each hymn. And I, I will choose mm -hmm. what the Holy Spirit is saying do. So be ready for all 100. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, you know, if, you and sharpens you. You need to write a book. Yeah, you do. <laughs> oh my God. Benny Hinn. Right. Bassett playing BB <laughs> Winans. Wow. All that you've done, you, your, the, your marriage, the yeah. whole. I mean, goodness gracious, what a, what a, what a story. Wow. Mm -hmm. so, so, what do you hope for your two children? They're, they've been born into a world right now that is really confusing. Listen. Wow. Um, I wake up every morning and pray for the wisdom of Solomon. Mm. And if we all know Solomon, God had asked him what he wanted. And he could ask for anything. And he chose that um, God would give him wisdom to lead his people. And because he asked for that and not riches, God ended up making him the richest person in the world. So for me, it's like if you give me the wisdom to lead these young kids in a time that is unprecedented, uncertain times, I believe that they have a chance to make it and be what they need to be. Things that we didn't have to go through, things that Patrick didn't have to go through, things that you didn't have to go through, they're going to have to go through. And it's like, give me the wisdom to take these precious babies and and just steer and mold. So that's what I'm doing. Um, I'm I'm uh, you know the scripture um, talks about how we're not meant to carry any of this weight and care and worry. So me waking up, praying for wisdom, give me guidance. People say babies don't come with manuals. Yes, they do. They come with the Bible. 
<laughs> they come with the Bible and the scripture is there. If you do this, you get this. If you do this, you get this. And we're supposed to be fruit inspectors. So I do believe we have a manual. There are certain things where they're crying all night. huh? You, but we have a manual in how to raise children. And that is the word of God. So I'm I'm going I'm to I'm I'm keep trusting God and, and keep reading that word and keep praying that he increase my wisdom and sensibility to be able to lead them in this crazy world that we live in. They are truly a blessing. I, 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 I never asked you, Patrick, do you do you and your wife have children? We don't have any kids, but we do have a niece and nephew who we love dearly. And they live in California now, so we see and them on Zoom. Are they, are, they, are they young or? Uh, 11 and 9. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, what? so they are, of course, homeschooled right now. and But still a lot of fun and very talented and everything. So we're excited about them. 11 <laughs> and 9. My goodness. Yeah. My precious age. But uh, Tim is like. Just born in one. Yes. Yeah, he's he's in not sleeping. Time because with children that small and that young, you can actually pick them up and put them where you want them. When they get 11 and 9, you can't do that. <laughs> I got Irish twins, y'all. Y'all, a lot of, Miss Jackie, I know you're judging me in your brain. I know you're judging me in your brain. Oh. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Because when I tell you, me and Breland were busy during that time. <laughs> Ah. <laughs> Confession. <laughs> it's been a joy, and and I'm gonna hold you to your word, Tim. You're gonna let me know about this new project. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And, and Patrick, we're gonna continue to play Waymaker, and you. you're gonna keep me posted about all, all the new uh, Patrick Lundy and Ministers of Music works that are coming our way. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Okay. And and Tim, I'm waiting for that book and that movie. <laughs> it's, it's, it's coming. It's coming. I got a few more things I need to do, and then I'm going to write the book. Thank you both so, so very much. This is Thank a true blessing, and I hope everyone who's watching um, was blessed as much as I have been. Uh, and tell everybody that if they miss it, they can go to YouTube. It's posted, going to be posted on YouTube as soon as we finish. Before we go, can I say something, Miss Jackie? I'm going to ask you to pray us out after you say what you're going to say. You are a legend. Thank you for being a jewel. Thank you for being Absolutely. who you are in this industry. I want you to know that when they say your name, it carries weight to it. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not just honored that you invited me on your show. I'm honored to have an audience with you. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I know I'm speaking for Patrick as well. Thank you for being integral. Thank you for being mm -hmm. upstanding. Thank you for doing this for as many years as you've done it with so much class and grace. So, Miss Jackie, I, me and Patrick, we honor you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Absolutely. what a Absolutely. Thank you. Well, so. Tim, please say a prayer for for us, for your ministry, for your groups, the ministers of music in Faith City, for all of the parents who are getting ready to send their children to virtual school or in classroom mm -hmm. school with all of the tension that comes with that for all of the people who have lost loved ones through COVID-19 and for all who may be suffering from illness right now, and for those who are hopeful, who see hope in the promise that God has given us and are really striving to get through this because they see the hope that Christ has given us. Tim, please pray us out. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for this amazing day that you have made. We thank you that you have given us the courage to rejoice and be glad in it, to rejoice and be glad in it, no matter what the circumstances look like for the millions of people watching and listening from all over the world. We thank you that you have reminded us that in your word that you have said that you would never leave us nor forsake you, that if we made our bed in hell, that you would be right there with us to the ends of the world. We thank you for Miss Jackie and all that you have called her to do. We yeah. thank you for allowing her to walk it out with class and grace like we spoke about earlier. Thank you already that her ladder will be greater than her mm -hmm. past. That eyes have not seen nor ears have heard. Neither has it entered in her to, into her heart what you're getting ready to do. 
things are going to be better than ever for her. I decree and declare that right now for Patrick. Thank you so much for giving us this minister of music, this angel, this 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 Levite um, to be serving in the vineyard for so many years and doing it um, at a A plus level. We thank you for his drive. We thank you for his zeal. We thank you for the fire that he has carried for 25 plus years. And we thank you that he's going to carry it until his work is finished. We yeah. thank you for everyone under the sound or in the sound of my voice. We thank you that you're reminding us daily who you are. Mm. We thank you that you are reminding us that you are sovereign that you have the world in your, your hands, that you said when we call on you, you respond. So now God, remind us, give us a thirst and a passion to go after you like never before. Give us a passion in a pandemic. Give us a drive to seek after you. Give us a hunger to get in your word, to encourage the uplifted, those who are suicidal, those who are depressed, those with low self-esteem. Thank you for reminding us who we belong to. So now, Holy Spirit, direct our steps. Let us know what it is that you want us to do. Let us know what it is, where it is you want us to go. We thank you for the chain breaker. We thank you for mending hearts, mending minds, mending spirits. We thank you now that our purpose is being carried out and you're giving us the zeal, the passion and the fortitude to walk in it. We thank you for all these things in Jesus name. We pray and believe you that it's done in advance. Amen. 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 What a beautiful prayer. Thank you Amen. so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. God bless. Thank you, everybody who joined us this evening. God bless you. You all be safe out there this Labor Day holiday weekend and just be safe in general. God bless you. Thank, Thank you. you. God bless.